McClunky. McClunky. So I just bought Mage Kanade's Fudinari Dungeon Quest. Everyone's yeah! Like, up right now. If you I'm want just kidding. To... No, you didn't buy it? Okay, never mind. I didn't know I'm not going to buy it. For $26? Oh, no. $26? I thought it was like 5 or something like that. It's, Steam's if covered it, if, in porn, and that's wait, look okay. Up, AJ, look up Placid Plastic Duck, see if that's on sale. <laughs> After, like, it being already $5. There's gotta be more porn. Whoa! It is. It's on for $1.83. Fuck, see, there you go. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best just vibe in get... the world. I could, I mean, I guess I could get it all, all for less than ten dollars anyway. But yeah, now exactly. it's like seven twenty five for everything. I've never been like more engrossed in a game where all you're waiting for really is just whatever new duck is going to show up and what the ducks do to each other. Like it's so stupid, <laughs> but I love that game. But yeah, if if Mage Kanade's Food and Art Dungeon Quest was less, I don't know, maybe maybe, maybe. in a dumb way. Maybe That's like a day a, one buy for me, dog. That's like a joke. It came out. I'm into three some weird ago. stuff. Came up I'm a weirdo. Ago? Yeah. Wow. Okay, we nailed you know, that time. And it's oh, all positive shit. reviews, so that's pretty good, actually. Wow. Uh, sorry, sorry, chat. We're we're talking about the Steam Spring Sale that yeah, just sorry, got just sprung change. on us. Let me just change the entire like heading. <laughs> we're talking about that and talking about what we're going to buy today. I was just about to like spend all this money, and then I remembered that I have to buy Resident Evil Four, which comes out Fuck, in like. I forgot. I'm like, looking at the days. reviews. <laughs> And one of the one of the positive reviews is I only play this to beat up Naked with. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Yikes. A, I feel like there's another yeah. game coming out this year too. Or what what was the other one you were talking about? Work. Massage. Work massage. Mm. I see. Hell yeah, brother. Wow. Oh, that game. trailer is right in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm they interested, but I don't know how to look that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> You won't regret it. Okay, so we're in March. Da, 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 da. Resident Evil 4. I swear to God, there was something else coming out around that day that I was like, are you kidding me? No, maybe that got pushed then. Never mind. Oh, I think... Wasn't uh, Jedi Fallen Order like coming out originally in March? Or when was that? I don't know, dude. I mean, that makes any sense Sorry, sorry, Jedi hey. Survivor. Yeah, damn it. Sorry. Because it's in April now or some shit? I think. That's anyway, so you the Mandalorian, for guys. This, AJ, you should know the answers to this. I haven't been uh, checking out any morning meetings for a while, so I... <laughs> oh, it's caught on record. <laughs> I can get Nino Kuni 2 for $14. This is a nine... Uh, it's a $100 game. Yes! It's that time of the year. Spend folks. your money! But it's only, it's only 15 <clears throat> bucks right now. Spend it! Do oh, for 15 bucks, maybe. <laughs> Dude, do you guys want to talk about The Mandalorian or what? I'm down. No. I don't <laughs> this episode see. sucked. Really? <laughs> I... Are you one of those people, sucked. Richard? The beginning of this episode? Fantastic. I love the it. end of this episode? Fantastic. The, uh, 40 30, the, between? the 30 to 45 minutes of watching a dumb scientist go on a dumb date with two throwaway characters just a complete waste of time and i hated every moment i, I liked it. the the implications of, of the story and everything and like what it was leading to but like i i was talking about like it's like the same feeling that like andor gave when like yep like, with like those beer bureaucracy i'm like i don't care yeah but columbian like, brew joe messaged me and was like hard andor vibes from this episode <laughs> i totally agree like this episode gave me andor vibes but i from from this i genuinely thought this was better than any andor episode i'll say it right now like I, I oh no, I gave way no. more of a fuck here than I did no. at all throughout Andor. So okay, I, I I understand the lore implications, and that stuff is kind of neat. I also am a really big fan, as I've mentioned all throughout Andor, of portraying uh pr portraying the the New Republic, um and and the Empire as sort of like equally fucked up in different ways. Yeah, I like, love that. That I I do really like that, but I I really really hated this stupid walking through the the fair date on coruscant shit it looked visually so bad it was so hard to look at like it was so clearly just green screen cgi <laughs> which is a hard turn from everything featuring the mandalorians it, it's so obvious where their money went because every scene with the mandalorians in it all of them looks amazing but the scenes on coruscant 
Like there's like a, a soft halo around every character from where they just couldn't be bothered to like fully <laughs> bleed out the green screen. It was so bad. And I don't like those stupid glowy popsicles. And I've said my piece on this. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It didn't even it looked like it was just like a light with like <laughs> resin over top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, anyway. uh, he's, she's like, well, you're melting, but like, I didn't see any melting. <laughs> um, the beginning of this episode, though, it had one of the, I think, the some one of the best looking um, uh, 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 spaceship battles in Star Wars. I really liked it. Sorry, my Disney Plus is being an asshole right now. Like, I'm literally, I want to go and see this CGI kind of like... Oh, yeah, like, the what? spaceship battle at the beginning was so dope. <laughs> Especially when, like, mm-hmm. Amanda was jumping on the ship. Man, it was amazing. I thought, honestly, that part, I was like, that was a dumb move to do that right when he did it, because, like, a second away, he was going to get fucking smacked by one of those TIE fighters. Like, <laughs> But did he die, though? He's so close. Like, he, he knew the risks, and he took it anyway. That would have exactly. been so he funny had a if a fucking pack. TIE fighter hit him like a, like a fly or something like that, and just had to wipe him <laughs> off his windshield. He flies away. <laughs> <laughs> get off of you, you Mandalorian. You're gross. And that, that fight that, scene just, was like, cool. The rest of the, the, rest of the movie is just... Uh, is just uh book tan the rest of the show. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that uh that uh they kind of emphasized that like Din's Din's ship is a fighter ship and like it needs to be used in this fight or Bo's dead. It's cool. I liked it. It set the episode really like it set it up really, really it well. Set it up awesome. And then only for it to switch. take a hard nosedive into like who gives a fuck territory. Well, I think that the only problem with that comes from like the fact that this episode is the longest episode so far of the season and like one of yeah. the longer episodes of the show. And it's like, why did you decide to like devote that much time to the situation? Something that could have definitely been cut down into like a smaller segment and you could devote more time to Din and uh, Bo Katan as well. I don't know. I don't well, even I just really understand why we needed to see it. I like think what that people want to know, like, because me, me personally, like, I've been wonder, wondering where Dr. Pershing has been because he's been shown to be, like, alive, uh, like, all that kind of and stuff. And well. And so I just wanted to know, kind of, going forward, what's up with him? What's up with. Well, I'm glad that, that he, he, like, it seemed like he genuinely did want to help the Republic. Yeah. But, like, in his own shady kind of way. Well, that's what I really liked about this episode. It really, like, set that up as, like, he was kind of, like, doing he was at one point he even like said to himself like you're doing this for a good reason he's giving himself his droid programming pretty much where like yeah he's he's like i need to give myself like the out the reasoning kind of to do this i guess that's not bad the only thing that i liked about about his scenes was uh like seeing right up front that the new republic is just a new name yeah. For the Empire. <laughs> I like yeah. that they're showing that, like, yeah, they're using Mind Flayers pretty much, but, like... Yeah. Just but they're like, powerful. oh, no, trust us, trust us. They're they're good now because we're good. How about you take <laughs> the button off that makes it go to that level? Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I like how when he's laying there, he's like, what do you... Those are Mind Flayers. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and they're like, no, that's fine. We're good, guys. And he's <laughs> like, it's a trap. That was Dude, when he said that. When he said that the fucking guy's face just oh, like <laughs> it's like he knew it's like he was like i know that admiral Ackbar said that you can't say that to us man i think so i'm a grumpy old guy because i didn't like it <laughs> like it's funny it's just it was used weirdly it should have been in a different scene not in what's supposed to be like this emotional end to this character which okay now on that front is this the? Is he dying? Like, is that what happens? He's fucking dead, bro. <laughs> if that's the he case, ain't coming like, back. He, he's he's been dead fried, or he's, like a, or he's like a fried brain. Yeah, guy. he yeah, just like, got like, lobotomized. Yeah, like he's just gonna be like a nothing guy when we see him next, if if at all. Yeah, because he straight up was man. like, "You're gonna mind wipe me," and they were like, "No, we won't. We're only gonna put it at two out of eleven. I I find that to be so. That's like a lame end for that character, then, because I really thought that like Pershing could be more of like a present kind of like aid to Mando at one point where like he's like this is what happened and I'm going to tell you about your fucking kid you know what I mean like cuz we don't yep, have yep, information yep. about him so it's like I just want uh, well like based actually... on like his based on his like opening like talk about like DNA stuff I think he was taking Grogu's DNA and splicing with like, Sidious yeah something like that for definitely sure, doing but... something like that absolutely but I just I just mean more so that I miss the idea like i I genuinely thought when we saw Pershing back in the season one where he was like like oh don't hurt me like I was trying to protect him I right there 
was like, okay, he's our scientist of the group that we're going to form at one point. And then, no, he's dead. Our like, ending scientist. No, no, because then he's going to find Pershing and be like, oh, I need, I need a droid part to fix this guy. It's just, like, so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it, I actually liked him a lot in, in, in Season 1, too, because, again, it shows that, like, a lot of the people in the Empire are just people. Guys doing work. It's just their job. They're not mustache twirling villains. He's just a scientist that gets paid to be a scientist. I mean, his boss is a mustache twirling villain, <laughs> but <laughs> whatevs. Um, so I just bought two games uh, for uh, for about the same price as Mage Con Days Funari Dungeon Quest. So hell yeah, dude! Devil May Cry Five plus Virgil Inscription and Cultic. Let's go. <laughs> just, that's Let's I'm doing go. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so born, I, can I, place a beaver? I need you guys to remind me because I was admittedly like absolutely tuning out um, this part of the episode. What were they stealing again? Uh, just like scientific equipment to continue his research, really. <laughs> so it straight up wasn't even important. It was just throwaway. Well, they're, they're like, oh, we got to get the mobile, uh, like the, the mobile, like uh, lab. I'm like, I thought it was going to be like mobile. <laughs> yeah, I guess like, it is mobile in like a ship. But, like... Yeah, that's what I thought they meant. Like literally a part of a ship that was going to go places and be like, okay, like this is what we mean. Yeah. No, it literally is like a thing you can carry. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a throwaway thing. I, it's, it was just a plot MacGuffin. I think that the only point of that entire thing was just to show that like homegirl's still evil and maybe there's something still going on with Grand Moff Gideon. It's going to try to destroy it from the inside. Can someone explain to me though what happened at the end there? Because I actually am dumb and didn't understand. Like, I don't get it either. Is it doesn't make like, any sense to me. Is she like ratting him out and being like, yeah, he got this stuff? Or is are the other people also imperial? Is she like an ex- is she like an extremist uh Republican or like is she still an Imperial? Oh, I'm thinking she's straight up an Imperial for sure still. Like like I, I think Yeah. I think she's still she's still doing like side work for Grand Moff, maybe. Well, then if the, she's doing the very stuff least, for Grand she's... Moff Gideon, then why wouldn't she keep him alive, the, the scientists alive, to help with the cloning stuff that Moff Gideon was doing? I think that maybe the implication is that they wanted all of his, like, the, the equipment that he was going to use and maybe get someone else to do it, and then everything that he knew, they were going to wipe out of his brain so he couldn't tell anybody. Uh, so, like, it's like, oh, course. like, he knew that they were mixing, like, Palpatine and Yoda DNA, so let's get that the yeah. fuck out of his brain. Who knew? It, it really could, sucks. Erase, erase memories like that. Because like this, this episode was bookended by two really good scenes. Yeah, I like, like them. Like the ending of this episode, uh, hate to say it, boys, but Joe and I called it. Um, what? Bo-Katan going to the Night's Watch and like having that like, oh shit, this is the way moment. Yeah, she's like joining them. I don't know. That if was like beautiful. That's... Hey, hey, our 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 thing is still happening. Yeah, we didn't Soul, say that, right? that couldn't happen. We, we yeah, no, no, no. I'm I'm not saying that 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 isn't going to happen. I, I mean, I am saying that's not going to happen, but I, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, there's there's time, but I it was very good to see that moment, because I'm pretty sure that's exactly what that is. Like, Bo-Katan is realizing that the fate of her people is with, with the children of the Watch. There's no other way. See, but that's mm-hmm. what I like about, like, the helmet thing in the show, right, is we don't really know what she's thinking in that moment. I think that, like, she's, like, in that moment, she's like, oh, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling my people, like, liking me, and I like this a lot. Yeah. But I don't know if she's like that. This is the way. Like I think. Yeah, I don't think she's maybe like super convinced. But you can see in that moment <laughs> where the other mandos are like touching her shoulders and stuff that like the impression that I got is that she's she's clearly seeing that this is is the survival of her people. There is no other way for for the Mandalorian culture to survive other than this. Because I like up until this moment, like, this I'm season... just here to drop off Mando. I'm just here to drop off. <laughs> and then she's like, all right, we're part of a cult now. I like, think oh. that actually might have been her intention, but I but the the two get away, uh, giveaways here. She kept her helmet on. She didn't take mm-hmm. it off for the whole episode. And yeah. and then when she is getting like the the shoulder pats from the other Mandos, she's looking around. It to, it to me is screaming that like she's coming to a realization that whether she likes it or not, the Mandalorian culture dies with her way or it lives with Den's way. Yeah. See, I'm almost wanting it to go, and I, I hate it because, like, Din just did go through the whole process of, like, going back to the way. But I'm like, I really wish Din was like, fuck the way. <laughs> we need to figure yeah. out a different way. Fuck no, the way. Dude, I, I have I a dark saber. Like, I love the way. I think it's great. It's the well, old I way. I like helmets. I like their helmets. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I, they're, I, all, they're, they're all just like stormtrooper helmets. They don't just look the same. That'd be boring. I did want to, I, I was, I, I'm sure we will probably actually get this. But I wanted an interaction between Paz Vizsla and uh, yep. Bo-Katan. Oh yeah, we're definitely I thought, gonna, I, like 
Because he was given some looks, like you can't really tell again because the helmet, but he was given looks. He knows I, who I, she is. He, he at least knows that she's uh she's Night's Watch. Mm-hmm. Or uh, 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 fuck. Um, Death Watch. Death Watch. Yeah. Death Watch. <laughs> my night. What, my watch. No, is what, she, what is she spe- uh, specifically? Uh, night Owl, I think. Yeah, she's a night owl. That's what. Yeah, that's what they said. That's what he called it. Yeah. So he he knows he knows at the very least that she's a night owl, and he knows who they. I think are. it was because of her yeah, helmet. The armor is like, it's her, very like telling on that front. Yeah. Her helmet yeah. has like night owl. Eyes yeah. Oh yeah. It's that's their inscription, but there's not a lot of night owls, and uh, yeah. he he would know who they are. Yeah, you could yeah. probably like pick out who it is. That is, if like realistically, like I've always wondered with Vizla, like. It, as I think is the one we have right now, right? Like where it's yes. like, yeah. is this actually like Pre's like son, or is this just like a yeah. guy? Gotta be. I mean, but like, how would that work? Think of it as like Pre Vizsla being the before Vizsla, the Pre. No, for Vizsla. sure, I get that. I get that. But, like, the, <laughs> or like the implication maybe to me was that he like found like a foundling and was like, "You're like my son," and gave him the name. That's also child. very possible too. That's because that's just kind of how they do. Like I just don't know if like. He had a kid, you know what I mean? Like, and it's he's well, he might not have had a kid, but he he would still have some sense of loyalty, or at least maybe did have a sense of loyalty to his clan. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Even though, uh, I don't know if they still go by clans, who knows? I think the the idea now is to just go by the way. I I also, I'm curious if they're gonna go into like, does Bo know who the armorer is? Who is the armorer? Well, actually, I think I think that the clan thing will definitely keep up because of the the whole sigil thing. I think is part of that, right? Where it's like he chose armorer to ten. So at one point, like the Jaren clan will be like a thing in the in the future. I imagine. I don't know. Uh, definitely, those two need to have an interaction, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like that that entire scene is they're like both radicals, pretty much. Yeah, that scene made the episode to me for sure. I I absolutely love that. Um, not only just you know kind of seeing more Mandalorian stuff, but also um, for me, like from an armor building perspective, uh, this is a very small thing. I don't know if you guys would have noticed this, but one of the Mandalorians was wearing traditional Mando armor, like Boba Fett, Jango Fett style, mm-hmm. where the chest plate is segmented. Uh, that's that's called modern Mando, whereas what we see now is called uh, post imperial Mando. So mm-hmm. and that made that. that made me feel really good because I was worried that like they were trying to like retcon uh, what Mandalorian armor has traditionally looked like. So it was really good to see someone other than Boba Fett in this timeline wearing traditional Mandalorian armor, which would also uh, stand to reason that that specific Mandalorian was probably from Mandalore. Because that's what they all wore in the Clone Wars. Yeah, I have it noticed that be because like a, true, a true born one, yeah, for sure. A while mm-hmm. ago, I tried making like armor for myself too, and I noticed that like Boba Fett and Din have two different kinds of armor. Yep, very different. Which is cool. Oh, very cool. Yeah, there's multiple eras of Mandalorians uh, and their armor. Um, there's like five or six. Uh, right now, the current one is post Imperial. Before that is is the modern era. Uh, before that is uh, like the Crusader and the Neo Crusader era, which is like um, like Kotor Mandalorian oh, armor, yeah, which yeah. I think looks stupid. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> I hate it. Actually, I, okay, uh, but I do like Mandalore's helmet. It looks stupid, but I do like Mandalore's vibe. Mandalore's yeah, for the sure. Ultimate. I, I like their armor. I just don't like their helmets. Their helmets look goofy. They look like uh, condoms <laughs> with yeah. like a mask on them. Yeah. What the fuck? Why? What? What? Why do they look so weird? Yeah, it's just it's. We're you know, wanting to make it look different. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago in Star Wars history. Weird. But then, like um, the ships look pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> anyway, yeah, oh, like Star the, Wars. <laughs> this episode was interesting because it was bookended really well, but everything in the middle, man, I I was just like, I don't care about this guy and his what? love for biscuits. Yeah, the shit in the middle really. <laughs> <laughs> really makes it so that there's not a lot to talk about because he's just really one one track mind for the whole thing. I don't know, Pretty I much. Think that, like, if we were more into that aspect of it, I think there would be aspects we could talk about for sure. Because like I don't know. I oh, love, like how he likes the yellow biscuits instead of the red biscuits. Like I loved seeing the the stormtroopers in that group that whatever her name was in, like just like talking about like now that they're in the Republic, they're like, oh yeah, like we know, like yeah, you know, like all for the New Republic and all that. But like, come on, those like. Those biscuits or whatever the fuck, right? Like that was the, the shit, food. right? 
Yeah. It's like, really? Like, Jesus, people. But, like, that exact I thought that scene was weird. I, I like that, was... that kind of stuff because it just feels like what it would be like act- if a regime, like, fell and it's like, what are, what are we doing now? Yeah, dude, absolutely. And, like, I, I've said before, I really like Slice of Life Star Wars stuff. This one just didn't hit it for me. It just felt, that whole scene felt strange. Like, I can't, I can't put a finger on it. And I, this might have been intentional. It might have been intentional that it's supposed to be that they're being brainwashed because that's what it felt like to me. Well, because even like, the fact that they all have like they're not people yet; they're like codes still, right? Like they're right. They're numbers, it's, which is ironic because that's literally what they do to stormtroopers. Exactly right. So I, yeah. that's what I love. I, what you said earlier, pretty much, where it's like seeing the the dichotomy between the New Republic and the Empire, where it's like, well, nothing has really changed. It's just like a new face. I think it was really good, uh, and like th- th- it made them feel really suspicious in that, like you're not sure if they're actually on the side of the Republic or not. Yeah, that's that's what I felt the entire time. I just felt like they they were just like playing along just for their own survival, you know. I figured that she was probably it was going to be like a twist where it's like, oh, she's evil. Like I think everyone did, but yeah, that one was pretty obvious. But the other the guys that, too. Like, the way that like they played that out was kind of like, oh, okay, like that was chill. But then at the end, it confused know. me again. That's what I didn't like. I didn't like the very fucking end of it. It just made me go, what? I, yeah, I did. I did kind of like how he was like. It was his first time on Coruscant, and he had like the tour guide thing going. Oh, I, like I did kind of like the Wikipedia that. Wikipedia article, yeah, I love that. Yeah, that was kind of neat. I I kind of like that a well, little bit. I like how they kept on uh, bringing up like the the days of Coruscant. Tong's yeah. day, yeah. Tong's day. They had uh, they had uh, uh, fuck. What was it? Like the the their version of Friday was uh, what's the middle part of the of the force? Not the Jedi or Sith, but it's the the it starts with the a B. Bendu, Bendu, that's what it was. Bendu, Bendu Day, yeah. Bendu Day, I forgot about that one, but that was cool to hear. I was like, uh, Bendu Day, that's so cute. How do they know? About I um, that, I really like too that the the fight uh between Bo Katan and and the Din and Bo fighting against the um uh the Tie fighters that they were they were specifically Tie interceptors. Yeah, and how they like they called that out. They're like, oh, because like these ones are tougher. Yeah, because like they. I mean, I'm sure they did that just so that they could explain how they basically lose that fight. But yeah. still, uh, it's cool to see tie interceptors. They're neat. Because <laughs> I think that we don't really see a lot of them in live action, right? Like, isn't this the first time we've seen tie interceptors in live action since like Return of the Jedi? There you go. Holy shit! To my to my knowledge, anyway. When I saw them, I was like, I haven't seen those in forever. I haven't seen those in forty years. Yeah, but I uh, <laughs> I haven't seen those since I, I went to the theater. It's something that I can at least say for all of the new Star Wars media, including Andor. In fact, it's almost like Andor actually had some of the best. Is like they are really knocking out of the park all of the like space battle scenes. Yeah, they make, uh, yeah, that shit, like, they make the Tie Fighters actually intimidating. Whereas like we all see them as a joke. Yeah, yeah like in they... Andor, where the guy had like uh, hit the ship that was like the, the mercenary ship with like all the hidden weaponry on it and shit. That was rad. I fucking and, like, hated seeing... that. Oh, hated it's so that cool so and much. like. Seeing seeing the space battles in this is awesome, and I think some of the visually like most impressive moments in the Mandalorian season three so far have been spaceships entering and exiting the atmosphere. Yeah, it's it's just amazing to look at. Uh, I am glad they bombed Bo Katan's stupid Minecraft stupid. house. Though. Yeah, her stupid <laughs> house where she's just hanging out all alone. I do. Yeah, they bombed her so singular at that throne. Time. Like, yeah. like, she it looks like Bo Katan spawned in a random biome in Minecraft built herself a little castle and was like, I live here alone now. <laughs> yeah. I, I just and sit in my throne. All, all day. I do is sit here fully clothed, fully armored, staring at the ceiling, being sad <laughs> on, on the off chance that that did Jaren might show up. Yep. The, uh, the moment it got destroyed, I was like, up, oh, she's joining the call. Oh, she has yeah, nowhere that's to really go. What that was too. I just yeah. like, yep. huge, like, Oh, well she's definitely coming and like doing this whole thing now. Ooh. Do you guys think we'll get uh, Axe Woves and uh, what's her face back? Lisa Frank? <laughs> I thought that was Oops. Axe Woves. No, it was uh, Axe Woves and the other girl. I can't remember. Uh, Bo oh, Katan's Cosca people. Reeves. Cosca Reeves. Cosca Reeves. Reeves. That's what it was. <laughs> Lisa I, Frank. <laughs> wow. I'm just, what's the guy's name, sorry? Axe Woves. Axe Woves? Oh, wow. right, right. These two. Yep. I think that they'll show up maybe, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if that's necessary, but I think that, like, at the end of the... Like, when... Inevitably, when we get the Mandalorians all together, they'll show up. 
this makes me wonder like okay i i do imagine that they'll likely show back up and rejoin with the children of the of the watch um i wonder if they're gonna try to get like boba into that because like not. they acknowledge him they mentioned him in this season but they also threw out the bullshit that boba fett's not a mandalorian we'll uh, just gotta do his own thing right now which is horse shit. I mean, what is the Mandalorian anymore? When did they throw that out? When did they, when did they say that? They said that in uh, Mandalorian Season 2 Ooh. with Boba. With Boba, when, yeah. When he uh, uh, meets Bo-Katan. She calls him an imposter and says that he's not he's not a true Mandalorian. And yeah, he but says, like, what oh, is a true Mandalorian? That's literally just her be. being a dumb bitch about it because he's like... No, he says it himself. He says, I never claimed to be. Yeah, but uh, I don't care. I don't care. Like, he's yeah, no, I, I think it's stupid. Boba Fett is literally the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like, what is a Mandalorian anymore? Because like, most of the people are just like family. They're they're just people that joined their cult. Yeah, exactly. True. I don't think Boba would ever like do the not take off your helmet thing though. Yeah, no, I don't think you would. That's why I think it's all going to change. Like, I think that that rule is going to go at one point. Like, it's just going to be, like, not a... Din just thing. needs to buck up his pants, pull up the fucking Darksaber, and tell him how it is. <laughs> I, th- I think the helmet thing is here to stay. Yeah, I think so. I think that not only is that, like, a cool kind of, like, Jedi code or kind of at thing... Or, the very end. But it's, it's also uh, an easy money saver. Uh, yeah. Because they don't actually have to have um, Pedro, Pedro Pascal... Pascal. Or or uh, Katie Sackoff, they don't actually have to have them on set. They just need their voices. But then simultaneously, yep. that is like a problem for those actors, apparently. Because <laughs> they're like, I am not even able to like. Be- Maybe now, but they've already replaced John Favreau as as the voice of Paz. So, you know, like that's that's where this is going to go. I think I think it's to build up longevity. So like, if, if like. Pedro Pascal has to leave for some reason. They could just get someone that sounds like him. Yep. Easy peasy. That's what they do in the Clone Wars. I think then if they were going to... I hate this fucking show then. I'll be honest. Like, this show is fucking stupid because then doing the whole taking off my helmet in season two then? What the fuck? I like it. I, I think it's no, really cool. It's, I think it was pointless I, then. Like, what are we doing here? I think it builds up uh, a, a mythos around the Mandalorian mythos subculture sword? that is very cool. I have to take my helmet off for Baby Yoda for no fucking reason. He's gonna show so Baby in the Yoda can see his face. Who gives a fuck? I give a fuck. It, it was not a good thing then at that point. Like I felt like, oh, he's making a stride towards getting out of the way. And now it's like, no, we're going we're reverting. And that is just, eh. I feel so pointlessly done in the narrative then. See, I, I feel the other way around. I think that doing it, like, leaning heavier into the Children of the Watch is the coolest thing this show has done. And the biggest misstep that they ever had was taking off the helmets all the time and, like, getting away from the Children of the Watch. The worst I episodes think, to me were in season two. Well, for sure. I think the episode, uh, like, it would be pretty dope if, like, the season might end where, like, the armorer is forced to take off her helmet at some point. Yeah, who are I you, don't... bitch? I don't think it's going to happen. It might not uh, happen, I, but like, I think it'll be pretty crazy. I think I would like to know who she is, but I also I know that the person playing the armor is literally just a stunt actress. And like, Lee there's Swallow. no, yeah, the, there's no like, like professional actor playing them. Be quiet, Sierra. That wasn't for you. But, but like, um, I don't think that's a problem, necessarily. I mean, like, mm-mm. no, I just think that um. I think as these shows balloon out to be more and more expensive, um, it's wise for them to save money however they can. And it, it, it's always admittedly kind of driven me crazy when people talk about Pedro Pascal playing the Mandalorian, because if we're being real, he doesn't. He just voices him. Like 90% of the time that we're seeing Din on screen, it is not Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, because if I was in this kind of thing, I would do this shit all the fucking time, but... Dude, same. We've talked about this before, but like, if I had the opportunity to like be on a show like this, and they were like, "You have to wear a helmet all the time, so no one's gonna see your face," I'd be like, "Bet, dude. Perfect. Give That's me the helmet. Be better for me. Can I take it home? <laughs> Can I eat dinner with this shit on? Because it's cool." Yeah, I don't know. I just don't really. I don't see this show going in like a full on like. Fuck the helmet way, like I think that we're gonna be in a middle ground. It'll, it'll be I like think the helmets are the here mid- to stay. In the middle, I think. 
I think that the you don't want to the helmet, but you don't want to like keep the helmet. So it's like a gentle like caressing of the helmet. Yeah. I think this season may end with Grogu getting a helmet. That oh, would be, be so cute. cute. That would be cute. I will actually. Okay, that would be cute. I think there's a reason why they showed us a foundling getting a helmet. Uh, it's it's to show that a they're recruiting and b Grogu's gonna get his own helmet. He's gonna and get once... a tiny helmet. Dude, once Grogu gets a helmet, that's it. <laughs> Next season, he comes in with a full set of Mando armor, but yep. proportionally sized. Huge, huge fucking thing I've noticed this season, though, so far. If you really look at every scene that Grogu is involved in, it, like, it's so clear to me that he was not going to be in this season. Because, like, he has not done fuck all. He's so just Grogu, there. He's literally just there. I'm cool with that, man. I, 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 I hate... All the Jedi shit. I just hate it. I, I yeah. don't. I don't want Jedi shit in a show called The Mandalorian. No, see, but this, this is what I'm saying why... though is the fact that like, what? Why did we get him back then? Like, we should have just kept him away for a fucking season. It's money. The reason that they wanted because they want to make fucking merchandise. Oh, for sure. Guys. It's it's definitely money for toys and shit. But I I think from a storytelling perspective, it's 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 going to be a bit more about focusing on training Grogu to be a Mandalorian and not a Jedi. But like nothing like that. I don't know. Like we've seen him like being like, yeah, like a Jedi Lord. He's been like, yeah, like check this out on the, on the monitor here. Like you got to like learn how to navigate. Sure. That's like the only thing. Yeah. We've only had three episodes and in two of them, he was learning Mandalorian shit. I just think that that's so easy what to if? write in afterwards and be like, yeah, like this is like new theory guys, new theory. Grogu tames the mythosaur becomes a new Mandalorian. <laughs> I actually heard that as a theory because he tamed the Rancor. Like, I've heard that being said. <laughs> that he's going to be the one to do it. Because he tamed a Rancor, what? He tamed the... Uh, what, and he book of Boba Fett. But he calmed it down. Yeah, he just calmed it down. Boba tamed it on his own, though. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, he calmed its, like, rage down. So, like, the concept is that Grogu would go up to the Mythosaur and be like, chill out, bitch, and then be like, it's mine. He's going to be like, ooh, bad, and then climb on top of it. Yep. Uba, bring uh, it back. Gross. This, despite this episode being a little bit of a slowdown, it was bookended very nicely with more Mando lore, and I'm liking it a lot. And if they go back to that goddamn mythosaur, I will never watch this show again. I'm sorry, right. Richard, but you're never going to watch the show again at one point. Because... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you're never going to be on the show, Richard. You're, you have nothing to talk about then. Y'all about to owe me a dollar. They're show that. Fuck yeah, one dollar Venmo to you. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna show it again. Like it's so. I don't know. It feels so obvious. I think at at most, even at the we, end, she was looking at the Mythosaur skull on the wall. Yeah, because it's a symbol. That's I know point. it's a symbol, but like <laughs> the, having a Mythosaur itself. Now that's power. That's why I think that we see the Mythosaur very briefly in that episode. I think it's letting Bo Katan know that the legends are real when she sees the Mythosaur skull in the the um the hideout. It's an interesting reminder to her that maybe there's truth to these myths and maybe she needs to lean more into them. I think that they're using the symbology of the whole thing in a very literal sense, but that's it. I like how we could talk about this, even though you're wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we can all put our theories out there even though yours are wrong. <laughs> I think at, at most we'll see a mythosaur like swimming away or something. I was but in, surprised. In I thought that that was going to happen in this episode a little bit, where like they were walking out of the cave and you'd see its like tail go away in the water, and I'd be like, "Oh!" If this if this season ends in a stupid kaiju battle between Bo Katan riding a mythosaur and like a giant sea turtle, I'm done. <laughs> It'd be so fucking funny. Write that in the books, everyone. Richard won't like that. And so a Zillow Beast in a, in, a, in a Mythosaur. Yeah, oh. they've been setting up I, the Zillow I, Beast. Let's go. <laughs> I will literally turn the episode off and walk away from this show forever. I will not even finish the episode if I see Bo-Katan riding a goddamn Mythosaur. Okay, no, write that down, everyone. Write that down. Yeah, so stop the episode <laughs> right there where he sees Bo-Katan on the Mythosaur. And then we're like raving about like, it was amazing after that part. That was the mm -mm. best fucking but you episode never, ever. No. But you've never seen it because you could turn it off. off. <laughs> <laughs> the implications are incredible. Whoa! Uh, another little anyway. like little lore detail from like the mid se se segment of this episode. Uh, I really liked the because uh, this isn't like the other books and canon and stuff like that. The mountaintop of Umate or whatever uh, that like is the what? old. Is that actually like the that rock was the tip of the mountain? Was it? Yep. 
Oh my god, this is scoo- how oh, that, I guess I guess it goes to show how high the like, Coruscant is. Yeah, yeah, man, Coruscant's uh, built up. I love it. Like there's a line in one of the High Republic books about it where it's like nothing. I think they actually brought it up in this episode. That which was crazy that they referenced the High Republic like that, but like nothing can be so big that it can't be humbled or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. Even a, the biggest mountain can look like nothing compared to like things around it. So I thought that was a really cool idea to bring up. They're like, oh, from the tip, we could see all, we could see the entire planet. Well, I mean, not anymore. It's all just nope. buildings. Man, I would love to know what Coruscant was like back in the day. What would it look? Maybe we'll see that in High Republic. Uh, well, it's already like, it's already like super Coruscanty at that point. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's I think like two hundred uh, years ago, right? It's like we got to see four hundred like, years ago. I thought. No, I have so, so like, many questions years. about just like the the nature of course. Like, how big is the planet? How does it? How do they? How does the planet function as just a big city? I'm pretty sure like, how does... <laughs> has even been around in like the old Republic and stuff like that. Apparently, or... apparently uh, there's apparently Coruscant is a trillion people strong. Yeah, I imagine that it's like one of the OGs. It's like been around for. Like one of the longest, if it's had that amount of like, yeah, and it's it's probably like a Warhammer 40k like hive world where it's so old they don't even know how old it is, yeah. And it's like they at like the very bottom levels, no one even knows how this shit works anymore. I genuinely, that's why I want to see like the Earth of Coruscant. Yeah, let's touch ground on Coruscant. Like, is this planet really small, and we're just like building a city off? <laughs> yeah, they they mined it so much that it's actually like. Like one one hundredth the size it used to be. <laughs> you would imagine, right? This is this is where I have questions. Like, if they have built a, a planet size city that encompasses the entire planet, and it is so far off the ground that it's touching the the peaks of the highest mountains, this has to affect the gravitational pull of the planet. Or no. have they like are they wrong using, like anti grav drives? I don't think George cares. I gotta know, man. No, I don't think he cares. <laughs> Not only wrong, not not only are you don't wrong, kneel, but you're stupid. Yeah, don't kneal the grass. Are, are there mythosaurs under Coruscant? Um, there's also uh. <laughs> Just leave that. that. <laughs> so, uh, shoot, what was it? It was um. It's was, a oh yeah, the, the the name of the cities, city planets. They 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 brought that up. Oh yeah, they did. The what? Uh, they they have like a terminology specifically for city planets. Like oh, really? oh, I didn't even catch that. Coruscant. Yeah, they called them like. Yeah, uh, here, here it is. I got it. Coruscant is only a handful of city planets, uh, known as Ecumenopolis. There we go. Oh, so yeah, it's like he he has only a, a few tab city planets. Straight up reading Wikipedia to him. Yeah, it's and great. <laughs> along one of those things, it mentioned something about like the an extinct. Animals Museum, and I was like, I want to go there, man. Let's fucking look at some cool animals. Yeah, dude, he had the taxi from uh, from Star Wars: The Old Republic online. <laughs> oh, also, I don't know if anyone. This is such a deep, a deep cut, but apparently, the music in the in the scene where they're in the plaza is from Star yes. Wars Resistance. Like, which well, Resistance? Oh, I, I noticed it for sure that it was like it was like definitely like an old Star Wars song. Oh, okay, it might have been something else. It might have been several things too at one point, but like. At one point, I was definitely like, what the fuck am I hearing? And it was the Resistance music. And I was, like, genuinely tripped out because no one cared about Resistance. Like, no one talked about that show. I don't even know what that is. I, I thought That's it was the animated movie. show. Like, what? That animated, well, uh... I, I, well, I never watched the Resistance, but I recognized the music because I thought it was from, um, like, Naboo or something. Let's see. Star Wars, Star Wars Resistance, this... they made, like, a... Oh, this show! Oh, my God! This show has actual good moments in it, but they fucking hard cut it in season two when it was like that's unfair i feel bad i forgot this thing existed because i remember seeing it and just thinking immediately like this looks like shit it looks not as good as anything else that they've done let's just say that right like ugh. They and it with, takes like, place in like new trilogy series which is just gross no nah, it was god that was the best part uh, of it it was like oh this is actually like i'm learning about this world and i like it make it makes more sense it's like what happens with clone wars in general right where Back then, we hated the prequels, and then the Clone Wars came out, and everyone was like, oh, it's building, so it's making it better. I will say, as a person who's old enough to have gone to the theaters to see all the original ones, I never hated them. I only hated Jar Jar. 
as a kid, I did not like those movies. I liked the third one and was like, yeah, that's good. I, as, a, as a dumb kid, I, I uh, thought they were amazing. I was a teenager going through those movies, and I, I liked all Man, of them. Old. I Yes. <laughs> uh, I just didn't like... Even, even back then, I really didn't care for Jar Jar. Uh, nobody liked Jar Jar back then, but like... I remember liking the movies and going back and watching them now, watching like fan cuts of them, they're even better. Well, like the fan cuts, I imagine, would help a lot when they cut out a bunch of like nonsense crap. Like when, uh, what's his nuts? I can't remember his fucking name right now. Famous actor guy. He did like a famous prequel cut, didn't he? Topher uh, Grace. Maguire, or Topher, Topher Grace did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He like did. A famous cut of it. There's, there's a bunch of different uh, fan cuts. Um, I can maybe send you guys some links later, but uh, they drastically improve the movie. You can basically cut The Phantom Menace out completely. Yep, I've always said that, man. That movie's fucking pointless. It really is. The, the only important thing in that movie um, is, unfortunately, learning about midichlorians. <laughs> well, hey, we found and, Anakin. Like, that's like, this is it. And finding Anakin. That's, that's really it. The rest of it is literally just trade blockade. I think like a it's little thing in Phantom Menace, like a little tiny change that would have actually helped a little bit would have been sending Obi-Wan with Qui-Gon to meet Anakin and then Obi-Wan and Anakin could have like already a bond forming, you know what I mean? Like get a little bit of that friendship started. Yeah, I got to send you these fan cuts, bud. There's a lot of stuff like that where they restructure the entire movie. They put in a lot of deleted scenes and it, it makes the movie significantly better. Um, there's... There's even like specific fan cuts of those movies and and of the the OG series where they've like upscaled everything and like added new like CGI stuff in it in a way that's better handled than what Lucas did. Um and it's just it's incredible just to see like there's a whole universe of like Star Wars fan edits and some of them are just I I I've watched the um the the first the original 6 movies over and over and over with fan edits because some of them can be so wildly different that it changes the tone completely. Like, one of them just cuts Jar Jar out of the Phantom Menace completely, and you don't even notice he was there. It's, it's, it's like he never needed to be there at all. Oop. Exactly. <laughs> I just think that Star Wars is always going to be in that kind of, like, roller coaster of making a movie, and then going through, like, the phase of everyone being like, what the fuck? And then yeah. later there being something that kind of goes, oh, that's why. You know what I mean? You know, like, the fans are going to be hypercritical. It's yep. just it's the nature of it. And then you have like um like the fan cut of of the Obi Wan show. Uh, the, there's a fan cut of it that was that turned it into a movie, and it is significantly better. That's as a one movie. I genuinely think we should watch. Like we should watch yeah. that one together and be like, Holy it is fuck. so much better as a movie than it ever was as a TV show. Because like the the movie version of it cuts out like three hours of garbage, uh, and they add in cool little things too, like uh. Like Obi Wan during his, you know, the final fight with Vader, uh, he's hearing like Force ghosts of, of Qui Gon in his head, and that's something that wasn't in the show. Yeah, and they added that in, and it makes the it makes that moment so much cooler. Where he's like, "Oh, he's he's got it. Our boy's back." You know. Anyway, this episode sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you always. Still, I'd still say that it's like a good episode. Like, yeah, I I think that the the beginning and the ending of this episode make it. Not only worth watching, but a necessary watch. Yeah, but the middle portion I think was completely useless and this only, was actually only existed to kill episode. off that character. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> <laughs> this was an episode that was way too lo way longer than it should have been. I'll say that for sure. Oh yeah, like it yes. makes me so confused at why you you choose to make the other episode so much shorter. I didn't. Than, yeah, I don't fucking get it. <laughs> when I saw I, this I remember episode at a fucking hour long runtime, I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I'm so excited!" And then like most of wow. this, I was like, "Ah, okay, like that's interesting, I guess." But I, I let out an audible groan when he gets a knock on his little Star Wars door and he presses the button and pew, psh, psh, door opens and he looks down. He's like, "Oh, travel biscuits! All right." <laughs> I, I was yeah. just like, I was like, "Ugh!" <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> I like uh, the shit, consistency in like the the universe too. Like we're keeping it in canon that like right now the the New Republic is all about like like demilitarizing, but almost to, like a stupid degree where it's like there's a bunch of shit that like we could use from this that would be like a good idea. And they're like, no, nah, we're just like we got to destroy. Yeah, it. reminds me of work uh, at the dispensary where I work at. If like you like slice the tag a little bit, you have to destroy the entire product. So. It's remarkably stupid, and it, it's. Uh, I think it actually answers a question that I think a lot of folks have had about 
how the hell the New Republic fell to the First Empire Absolutely, so yeah. so badly. Because it's like the new when the New Republic takes over from the Empire. My question has always been like, where would all their stuff go? And yeah. now we know they were dismantling it for no fucking reason. Yeah, well, the reason was, and Mon Mothma is like a huge proponent of this, like which is why like. I think that they're gonna like do a whole thing where Mon Mothma, like, she got sick or some shit, but it was actually a ploy by evil people to do that. But like, she was like, we we have to be opposite of the Empire to like every degree, where it's like we can't have any, like, if we have a military, we're gonna feel like the exact same people or these fascists, exactly, right? So she was like, we have to go the other direction, demilitarize, take out all of the star destroyers, which is well, good a job, Mothma. Decision, Mothma. Like, you got an entire system of planets destroyed, exactly. billions and billions and billions of people, Mothma. I'd like to put it back to her because I hate her honestly. Like she's the worst. I can't stand her, and I hate that it's it's the new stuff that makes me hate her. So old Mothma was fine. Her. I, even when she, she said barely like, existed, which even when she was like many Bothans died, I was just like she said that so stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been replaying like through uh, Star Wars Dark Forces, and Mothma is like providing the missions for you, and she's fine there. It's just classic Mothma. Where she's like, Dad, you gotta go steal the the plans for the the Death Star on this planet. You mean you mean? That's fine. I'm cool with that. That was before we got we had to see. An entire fucking show dedicated to Mothma sitting in a living room drinking champagne with rich people. Yeah, good lord. Ugh. Why didn't she do anything, man? <laughs> That's annoying. Star Wars is stupid! Like, she just was doing nothing. Stupid! For so I'm so sick of Star Wars! <laughs> she had nothing alone for a whole season. Star Wars is making me become, like, unhinged. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that, honestly. Like, I... All of these, uh, I think Star Wars and Marvel combined are just making me lose my mind slowly. I, I'm going crazy. That's, like, what, that's, that's what I'm saying, Sam. It's like the fucking wear down. Just yeah. making me lose the, myself. The, the fatigue no, I sucks. Like, I love the stuff that we're watching, but I mean, like, it's just crazy. I do well, too, see, but I can feel it, man. I can feel it. I can distance myself enough from Marvel because I'm a DC fan. I always have been. Marvel doesn't matter that much to me. So when Marvel starts to suck, it's just like, yeah, all right, well, it sucks now. With Star Wars, though, Star Wars is such an important piece of my life <laughs> that, like, when Star Wars sucks, it's like, hey, can you guys, uh, can you guys maybe give me that little piece of my soul back that you just ripped out of my body, please? Because I, I need so that. That's what's magical about, New being, about growing up in, like, the prequel era for me, where it was like, just Star Wars has always kind of sucked. <laughs> but like, I feel like I'm always like, yeah, yeah I like this, all right. <laughs> like, this is like pretty much the. It is. It's part. It is part of it. It. it like, I. I've always been a fervent contender that uh, the original Star Wars also sucked. That Star Wars has always sucked. Like, it's. Star it's Wars always the new been, is, is arguably not good. <laughs> it's. It's always been groundbreaking. Like the visual effects in in A New Hope changed the industry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it literally created ILM. It's like the Beatles. The Beatles, they're not like good music, but they made like groundbreaking work. <laughs> right. Like Star Wars <laughs> Star Wars changed everything and I've always loved it. But like anyone who can tell me that Hayden Hayden Christensen is a worse actor than like Return of the Jedi era Mark Hamill, who just scowls the entire movie, can eat my asshole. Because <laughs> it's just not true. It's outright okay, not well, the true, dude. The difference I would say it's just the fact that, like, it was what was let through, like, in the editing and, like, the directing is different. Yeah, that's the only difference. The only real difference we, is that George Lucas was in charge of writing the dialogue in the, in the prequels where he well, wasn't in the we original. We are saying, every time we do this, we, we're always saying that, like, the directing is so wrong. I'm like, I don't think the directors know what's right there <laughs> because, like, we say so much that, like, every director is wrong, apparently. Well, I think I think Empire Strikes Back is is literally a perfect movie. Yeah, it's like oh, easily yeah. the best. Yeah, it's it's the best Star Wars movie, and I think as far as cinema goes, it is literally a perfect movie. Yeah. Um. So, and that that one is also not directed by George Lucas. <laughs> Irvin Kirshner, right on that one, or I think I, I don't remember the guy's name, but like the the problem with I, I hate to say this because it feels so gross because. We all love Lucas. We wouldn't have this if it weren't for Lucas. I don't love but Lucas. I've... The, the problem with Lucas, or the problem with Star Wars ha was before Lucas, and the problem with Star Wars now is that we lost Lucas. So it's like, where the hell is this going? Because I, I, I can't help but think that like, as much as I disliked the direction that Lucas was going with Star Wars, I would have liked his direction a lot more than the mouse's. 
I just I think every direction Star Wars goes is just a problem. <laughs> it's the thing, right? Because Star Wars is such a vast fandom that regardless of where it goes, a good portion is going to be upset. Yeah, you're going to make people unhappy for sure. Absolutely. Because like, like with his with George Lucas's ideas and going into like the very I don't even know how to word it like the spiritual crazy sides of the Force that he was talking about, like going into the wills and all that shit for like the next three movies. I don't mm-hmm. know if that really would have landed for a lot of people. <laughs> like, Maybe not, but I like it better than uh, than what's happening now. I like it better than the sequel trilogy's idea of just like redoing em- Empire. I think that's just uh, well, like, so. I dumb. feel like each trilogy has like a different way of per- portraying like the Force. Like the the original trilogy has has um just, like, like science. It's like oh no no it's like it's like more uh, the original trilogy has like more like mystical. Oh, yeah, it's like it. magic in four or five. Then six. then like the prequels have it more sciencey, and then the sequels have it more like uh, like uh, ancestral. Yeah, where, where you have to be a part of a bloodline in order to have the force. That's I, I think with, they went so back and forth on that idea in itself. That was it was. <laughs> yeah. I think what gets me is like as much as Lucas fucks some things up. At the end of the day, I feel like what Lucas was doing was more of a passion project. Uh, whereas with with Disney, it, it, it's very much like how do we make as much money as possible. I and think it, yeah, it it's like how do never we make, not felt that I way. I feel like it's how do we make this good enough that it can keep making money like that's kind of how i see it right where yeah, yeah. apparently directors they, uh, like people uh as you said that they've learned from the, the sequel but like still have yet to see that yeah and i i read about that too and the only thing that i think gives that a little bit of gives me a little bit of hope from that is that that was a leak from like a board meeting yeah was that they they, they know were, they messed up they know they screwed up big so time they're gonna they readjust they it, it to be, be just a little bit better just enough to still make them a ton of money so far i'm seeing that with the mandalorian yeah, with the mandalorian is like especially the fight scenes and yeah, all the stuff and all these so far really good fucking feel like don favreau congrats yeah i think it has just been like the i love this show too but man like the season one was so pure and so good Season one is, is lightning in a bottle. Everything Absolutely. since then has just been so like you can feel it where it's just like a like like you're saying well, it got, it's got a, company, a company decision of like what do we do, what do we do, what do we do kind of thing. And I I don't know. Everyone. <clears throat> yeah. In, in everyone. <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing is on the one hand, you can feel in season two that Disney stepped in and they were like, We need to make money. And on the other hand, it got felonied, where Dave Filoni's like, I need to tie it all together. And I hate that. And I, I do feel I like season three is kind of a return to form. As much as I feel like I love Dave Filoni, he is definitely being put on a on a high horse where people think he could do no wrong. Anyone who gets that like sure. kind of pedestal situation is, is uh like it's just a dark path where you're yeah. yeah. And it, it's so the dark it's, side. when you see the writing on the wall with Filoni, it's really hard to not see it. Like he's he goes for very specific tropes, and I, I've made fun of it before, but like he, he likes Dave Filoni, and so he, he loves his strong, independent female leads. And there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with that. that. Nothing wrong, but with that. <laughs> he, we don't need that many of them though. <laughs> we got a Tokyo, like, we got Book Ten, we got Sabine Ren. We... <laughs> right, and if we're being honest with each other, like they're not that different. Character, like what? Name some personality differences between Ahsoka and Bo Katan. Uh, Ahsoka's a Jedi. <laughs> that's uh, that's a profession difference. She's uh, she's very profound now. Ahsoka or Bo? Ahsoka. I don't know, dude. I saw Bo Katan sitting on a bench for five weeks straight. S- Sabine Ren likes to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like at the end of the day, if you boil Filoni's uh, characters down, they they all they're all kind of the same. Yeah, like the best work that Filoni did were with characters that he did not create. Like, I, uh, I feel like, like a lot Maul. of people uh, complain about not being able to like write a strong girl character. I don't think it's that hard. A lot of people a find character. It, uh, no, a lot of people find this controversial because um, the way I do it is I just write a male character and just change all the pronouns. Yeah. I mean, I, that's that's kind of how I feel about it too. Like you should, you don't need to write a strong female character any more than you need to write a strong male character. Yeah. Just write a strong character. Just write, write a strong character and then decide on what gender it is later. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the the gender is not important. Like yeah. I could care less if it was Bogatan or Brokatan. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference to me. The character is cool no matter what. Wait, can I tell you guys my actual my biggest thing that I hated about this episode? Uh, when, nah. All right, guys, we're out of here. Thank when you. The, for when they're dropping by the McClunky. Tra- when they're jumping off of the train and they manage to land on a fucking 
like pile of pillows. Ye- oh, that was weird. <laughs> like the way they jumped, I thought they were gonna go backwards, but they went to the side somehow. <laughs> it just was weird, <laughs> and I didn't. I hate yeah. when that always. And happens. did they just like, happen to time it perfectly, to land on like the softest yeah, piece like, of equipment bullshit. there? Shit! Oh, I hate that kind of thing. But that's me. I don't know. I full on tuned out. I-, I forgot that there was even a train. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that was Tong's Day, forgot. man. Happy Tong's Day, whatever she said. Happy Tong's Day. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Those, those, those two characters mean so little to me. What's, yeah, what's his face in Who's Are Nuts? <laughs> oh, uh, he, his name is Pershing. It was like Penn or something like that. It's his first and she name. was like Aaron or some crap. Because I remember his name just specifically because What's His Nuts in season one said it all the time. Like, Dr. Pershing. Are they going to do... Um, do you guys think that they're like maybe setting up Grand Moff Gideon to like like report into Thrawn or something? Oh, oh, maybe. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening, and I kind of hate it. Yeah. But I they were hinting at like what his demise might have been. They're like, oh, they, they subject, subjected him to the the mind flare, or that he got lost on transport and stuff like that. I, I, I get the impression. I get the impression that him and and uh, the girl that we saw in this episode. Uh, actually work for Thrawn, and they're doing some other shit. Yeah. yeah. And then that means Ahsoka's gonna have to come in. and Which means and... they're gonna bring Ahsoka in. <laughs> oh, absolutely, guys. The show's becoming, uh... like, it's it's gonna do that Defenders thing, where it becomes, like, how do we defeat Thrawn at the end of this? God, I Ahsoka. hope not. I hate that. I think it's dumb. I, I can't stand it. I, I Not only do I dislike Ahsoka as a character, but I think it ruins it. I, it ruins Star Wars when we, like, make it so small. That in a galaxy, everyone knows everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I forget who brought that up with me, but like, like, like in a galaxy, trillions of people wide. Literally, a single planet has a trillion people on it. Uh, like, how do how do the same like twenty people keep on encountering each other? Well, it's like yeah. a, a mixed bag for me, right? Because like in New Star Wars, I almost don't like certain aspects where they try to do that. Where like Boba Fett is, like, in old canon, a notorious bounty hunter that, like, everybody <laughs> knows about. And then he shows up in a bar in, in Mando, and it's like, oh, I've seen your, I've heard your voice on a thousand clones. It's like, yeah, but bitch, this is Boba fucking fat. Like, look at the yeah. armor, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but, like, Boba makes sense, and, like, the Skywalkers make sense, but I, I guess where I have a problem is where, like, Dr. Pershing, or whatever, gets sent to Coruscant, a planet-sized city, and instantly gets taken to a, a base that just happens to have this girl that he knows. There are 500 military bases in the United States alone. The, the chances, the probability of him going to one place where this one person that he kind of knew happens to be are astronomical. Well, I, not, not to be that guy. I genuinely think that that was like all part of her plan. Ah! McClunky! <laughs> Like, I don't know, that part feels kind of like like she knew all of this was going to happen. Like, even when she was, like, first shown in the uh, in the courtroom, not courtroom, in the courtyard or whatever, eating with all the other people, the vibe that she gave, I was like, oh, shit. Like, she is here with intention. How, how, how did she plan this? What, what I still don't, I don't even get this. What is she in charge of? How do you not understand her, her galaxy brain ideas here, man? I, I don't understand, like... Is she working with the Republic? Is she part of their, like, special forces now? How does she have any control? I'm pretty sure that she's Imperial as fuck, but they just really believe that she's, like... They just believe her? Oh, we're just gonna leave her in this room with this mind flare? That's what I was saying with the the people before. It's like, how are... Like, sure, they're part of this, uh, this amnesty program, but, like... Like, how do we know that they're not here to, like, just fuck you from it's the inside, so you know? Bothered. Like, okay, so you're going to tell me that this chick is the second in command to the most notoriously evil guy in the Empire that we have found to date, and even are going to believe other, her? Even the other Amnesty people were like, oh, you're with Gideon? Whoa, you know? Right. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna yeah, give like, her little... Give her little baby bottles full of, like, watered-down skim milk and be like, oh, <laughs> she's cool now. Pop up a little bottle for well, the like, doing what here. Gathered, like it seems like the uh, rehabilitation program is kind of intensive, right? So it is kind of imperial sounding, where like they're trying to make you like. He think... seemed kind of scared of it when when they they're talking well, it's, about it's, it. Too. It's definitely brainwashing. There's no doubt in my yeah. mind that they have those mind flayers on base for a reason. Damn, like they're using it on them. So I just, and I love that shit. I just think that making the new republic kind of like so they are using imperial tech. 
Yeah. 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 That's what, like, Absolutely. That's, that's what Akbar said at the end. He's like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like that, but like, we're, well, we're, it's, it's, we're the good guys, so it's okay. It's not going to be that strong. It, it's like, just going <laughs> to a little memory. Where my biggest problem comes from only, and this is just such a small thing, it's just like, it's just the execution of the scene where she like reveals that she's betraying him. Where it's like, yeah. what is happening? What is actually she, the vibe? She kind of like steps in front of him yeah, and it's like, like, oh. Is that implying that she's like, aha, I was, I was, I'm evil, I, yeah, but like, I'm telling she pulls these off her people, mask. I'm off Gideon. <laughs> I'm telling these people that you're doing this evil thing. Or are all the, re are all these rebellion people here, I don't know what I'm calling them, that Republic people, are they all also Imperial right. people? Right. Exactly. Like, are, 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 is she just like really, really, really in with the, the New Republic people? Or are they also kind of imperial? Like, yeah. what is this? What does this mean? That's my only problem is that I wish that that was a little clearer. Like, I did. And like, I I know that they wanted to show her turning the dial up to show that we're going to kill off Doctor Pershing or whatever, or lobotomize him. But I just couldn't. I couldn't not think like, why would they just leave her in this room? She's also a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> well, not like a prisoner though, because like that's what's like that's what I'm saying, right? Where it's like if. She is just like, yo, I just outed this traitor guy. And that's why he's like, yeah, like, you're a really good person in this program because you always out these traitor people. Like, they just think she's, like, really good on that front. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what blows I'm confused me. by. I, I, I just I wish it was done a little bit better. It made dude, no sense. Some of Star Wars is just straight up stupid. <laughs> it's just stu This is a world where only a few years ago, there were goddamn sorcerers running around. <laughs> And now they're like, eh, we can More change like 20, people. 25 years ago, there was wizards. And, right. There were well, little space that, wizards like, and people blowing ago, up was, planets. Yeah, it's a giant laser in the sky that would blow up planets. And now they're like, eh, give her her travel biscuits and we'll believe her. <laughs> it's it, like, come on, dude. There's no <laughs> way they're this naive. Unless Apparently they are. Star Wars is just stupid. <laughs> Everyone in Star Wars is stupid. I believe this is I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here. Here's my fan theory. The Star Wars universe on average has a lower IQ than anybody existing on Earth right now. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I would say so. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> in Star Wars is uh about 10% dumber than actual people. <laughs> well, how okay, so in, in the first uh movie, how old would you say like uh like Han Solo is? He's like 30 something. Uh I think Han's in like his late 20s or early 30s in the first movie. So he was obviously around when Jedi were around. Yep. So why the yeah. fuck did he not know where Jedi was? I think you can get by with with Han not knowing it because Han's only ever been around the Outer Rims, That's and not true. there was less presence. He's motherfucking but... from Corellia. Oh yeah, you're right. He was in the fucking military. <laughs> Man, fucking Star Wars is stupid, dude. <laughs> I always like. I think that it's just genuinely that there are some people out in the world that just never really experienced them. They didn't see him, and they just know people are talking a lot of shit. Like, oh, Jedi were so cool. He's like, I don't believe in that shit. I ain't never gotten help from like, a like, Jedi. No, well, I, I think it is fair to say, like, say that oh, there's... You remember the Tibetan monks? I'm like, what the fuck's a monk? <laughs> let, let me. I want to. I wanna, let me look this up real quick. How many Jedi were there in 10, total? There was like thousands of them. Apparently. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand is a very small number in a galaxy. Apparently not. <laughs> So I mean I think that you can it's it could stand to reason that like there's a lot of people that have never seen a Jedi. Yeah, but like but still, not, like, not you, believing in them though, that's different. Yeah, you've never <laughs> seen like a fucking Tibetan monk, but like this you still know they exist. Right. And if if Tibetan monks were uh at the very center of the uh the government <laughs> Yeah, if they were at the center of the greatest war in the galaxy. Yeah, I'd probably be like never seen one, but they're in I the books. They exist. They're, there they are on that they're, video. They're in, they're in all the books. <laughs> <laughs> History talks about them. I could watch a video, right? I could just pop in a movie. Unless <laughs> somehow yeah, like said, the Empire has done like a huge book burning project where they destroyed every evidence of Jedi. I that don't know. actually is kind of true. That did kind of they, Yeah, they do actually do that. Yeah, but, it's, but like, it's how still, can they erase every evidence of Jedi? If, That's you, if you existed during a time period where Jedi existed, you should know about them. Yeah. Like, it, it makes sense for Luke not to know. No, but yeah, he kind but of not, knows not him, kind of. Like, he still kind of, like, has, like, oh, like, the tale of the Jedi? Like, well, he, he, hears, he like, knows because, like, because, like, old Ben Kenobi's walking around going, 
<laughs> you know, he knows. <laughs> That's why he knows. He's got a, a freaking desert wizard watching out for him his whole life. I think that the really, like, this, the, it all comes down to the fact that it's just Han's character to not believe in, like, like, Han would pretty much be like a, a flat earther in today's world. He'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> like, no Han literally that. went to prison and talked to a giant ape man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Star Wars is stupid. <laughs> it's just dumb. He's like, there's all this evidence around me that Earth is is circular, but you know, I I don't believe it. It's spherical, <laughs> actually. It's not circular. Sorry, it's with a big ass fucking circle. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's all I have to say about the evidence Mandalorian. of all this stuff. <laughs> Pretty good episode, beginning and great. But it was, a, I think, it was a mediocre episode bookended by a really good episode. About 15 minutes of this episode was amazing. Yep. 15 minutes of it was like A plus Star Wars and about 45 minutes of it straight up was ass. <laughs> I don't know about ass. I hated yeah. it. I hated it. It was it was like the worst of Andor it all, like just sandwiched in between some of the best Star Wars I've seen. <laughs> yeah. It was a really this was a really uh hard episode to pin down. <laughs> yeah. Cuz as, yeah. as soon as we got away from Pershing and we got back to Mando stuff, I was on the edge of my seat again. Like as soon as that, yeah, as soon as that happened, I was like, "Oh, we're back on the episode." Yeah. Oh, thank God, Mandalorians. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, I it's seeing the runtime. I was like, "Well, we're only gonna be here for like goddamn two seconds." So this is not yeah, I know. Thing. But like, dude, <laughs> still, like w- when I started this episode and we got to Doctor Pershing, I was like, I, I I felt my spirit be crushed when I realized, like, oh, yeah, because like this a slow is the episode. It was a slow realization for me where where it was like. Like after like five minutes of Pershing, I was like, "Oh, is this the rest of it?" I've seen. Yeah, it. We're, we're getting a whole episode about this throwaway character. I've seen people really compare this episode to the Book of Boba Fett, where uh, Din took over like a, a two episodes of Mando's or of Boba's storyline. But I, I don't see it as nearly as egregious because no, I, I don't no, think no, that, no, that, that's, it's not that's, as bad as that. Yeah, because this character is part of the Mandalorian show. You know, it, it it's kind of important, but it's. I, I don't think it made a difference. And I, I think that we could have just shown 10, 15 minutes of it and got the point across. Absolutely. I think that they could have cut it down a lot. The fact that this yeah. is the longest episode. Actually, let me look at like the run times in general, like from every season. Is this the longest like episode? 50, this episode's like 59 minutes long. Like um, we could have, we could have accomplished the exact same thing. If we cut to Pershing giving his speech, uh, joining the Republic, see him get to his room learning about Coruscant and learning about how to be rehabilitated and then what's her nuts shows up in his room shoots him with a gun and then leaves pretty much yeah like there's really that would no have accomplished reason, the exact same there's thing there's really no reason for her to do the whole mind thing instead of just killing him she could have just murdered him <laughs> at any point and it would have done the exact same thing huh yeah this is also the longest episode i think the only the other longest would probably be the season 2 premiere uh, which was like 56 minutes. So This is the longest in the series? In the whole series, I'm pretty sure. What the fuck? That's stupid. Dude, That's get me out of here, bro. That's a choice. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm never, never doing this that. again. I'm, never doing I'm this done again. with Star Wars. I'm leaving. I'm done with Star Wars, dude. I hope McClunky, I'm goodbye. McClunky, peace. <laughs> Just leaves. <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, I will start looking for people to raid into. Let's look for, like, a Star Wars stream or something. Let's see. We got... No one's doing, like, a cool-ass no-death run kind of thing for uh, Fallen Order. Jedi, yeah. Because every time we... Oh, okay, Richard, we didn't have you here for The Last of Us, so, like, now that we're at the end of this, let's see here. What do you think of the last episode of The Last of Us? Uh, the show fizzled out remarkably. Didn't hmm. like it. Yeah. What do you think of the drafts, though? Uh, I thought the draft moment was completely ruined. Which we had you on for that last episode. We were, we were, yeah. That's kind of what I was expecting you to say, honestly. <laughs> I, I think they they ruined it because the the entire point. I'll just I'll just say this real quick. The point of the draft moment of the game is to be a a moment of of absolute hope in what has otherwise been a devastatingly oppressive world. And this show has bounced up and down between hopelessness and hopeful so many times that by the time we got to the drafts, I was just like, ugh, whatever. Yeah. There, there's some, there were some questionable choices. 
Uh, all in all, I would give it like a like an eight out of ten. I did not the whole- like the last episode. I I hated. I actually outright hated the way Joel took out all the fireflies. I thought it was lame as shit. Just playing a backing track while Joel silently murders fifty guys somehow without showing yeah. him struggle to do it at all. Oh my god, Richard! I wish you had and no so bricks in the badly. face at all. Yeah, no bricks. No bricks. Not a single brick. Uh, and I also uh, think that they completely ruined David. You weren't there on the second. Uh, you you weren't there on that that episode either. Nope. Oh. I Fair think enough. they fucked that up big time. I, I think they, you, they Richard, dropped the man, ball. You would have been fucking great ammunition for me on that episode. Jesus. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Fair <laughs> yeah, enough. That, I, I they ruined that episode. They, they all made in that, all, they made I, the oh baby girl moment not good. Yeah. <laughs> I think the the uh, all, all in all the whole show like eight out of ten, but like those yeah, yeah I, I could see that. I, I still agree with the entire the show in its entirety being an eight out of ten, but the last two episodes to me were I think the worst two episodes. I think because like I like I think it's just what we were talking about the entire time is where they were weirdly like putting in like full episodes just disconnected from the main story. They rushed the shit out of this. This season needed to have been two seasons. They, they need yeah two seasons of the first game or add another fucking episode and take out the whole fucking Ellie and and what's her face backstory. Right, right. So, take take that into season and two or something like that if you really want. I, I I personally will not forgive them for the utter lack of infected in this show. Yes. That's oh my god. That's the biggest problem we were having for sure the whole way through. It like they aren't even an issue. It's a it's a non issue completely. Apparently, like, the season, like they've confirmed that the second game is going to be multiple seasons. Uh, they did that a couple days ago, and, and that, that is going to have more infected. That's even worse for me because, like, I, I think it's we talked about this, but I think it's universally accepted that the first game is is loved by everyone, and the yeah. second game is not. And it's so bonkers to me that they went with the decision to focus in on the second season. Yeah, because I think like the creator has some weird fetish for Ellie. <laughs> Dude, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mandalorian. My Mandalorian. God, they're also like they've already said like, oh, we're gonna keep Bella Ramsey unless she doesn't want to come back. And I'm like, okay, well then, can you wait a bit? Because like, I get that she is 19, but you also just use her as like a 15 year old. And if we see her right away again, and she's like, oh, she's like 20, I'd be like, no. <laughs> no, she it's, looks like a yeah. fucking twelve year old. She looked like she was twelve and fucking. I don't know how old she was in Game of Thrones, but like, goddamn. Well, they they, they, they looked like up a, pretty bad too because <laughs> Bella Ramsey has a very unique look to her, uh, yeah. and so that's that makes it so that whoever they choose to cast as as Ellie in the second game, it's it's not going to look like Bella Ramsey. <laughs> I just, just think can't. they should just wait. Just do this show again. If you're going to do season two, like you are. Or maybe they're going to do some shit where they don't actually do season two, or they don't do the second game. They do like in between shit or something. I don't know. But yeah, I guess we'll see in three years. <laughs> true. Yeah, all these all these shows are taking so goddamn long to come back. Which I'm like okay with to an extent, but then also uh, it's hard. All right, we're gonna raid into Rand 118. They are playing Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, I was just gonna give you OGs. Okay, well I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, McClunky, Lunky, McClunky, Lunky, Lunky, McClunky, Chunky Monkey. Jeez, what the hell was that? I always think an earthquake is about to happen living on the West Coast, folks. Like, is that is that just like normal? Oh no! Because like know, whenever shit just falls over randomly, I'm like, here it is. Here's the big one. You don't, even, the, the big one. you don't even know the big one, Richard. You don't even know. There are not earthquakes where I live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't exist here. There's always the scariness of the fact that like the big one is going to come one of these days. In Alberta, <laughs> in Alberta, there was some like in my hometown there was there's an earthquake that happened, and I was like, there's like I was like, how the fuck did that happen? There's no fault lines in in Alberta. We learned later that it's fracking, but like. I remember talking to Megan. She's like, "Oh, of course there's fault lines there," and I was like, "No, there isn't. Why would there be a fault line in Alberta? There's nothing there. There's no water or anything to indicate a fault line." Yeah. No. Anyway. I don't anyway. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it would have to be pushing like to the mountain, right? So it'd have to be like the whole continental plate of Canada, pretty much, wouldn't it be? <laughs> like... Oh my God, that's some science talk, yeah, everyone. McClunky, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Why? All right, boys, I will catch you guys.